This is a children's adaptation of a play, and it's called The Mixing Stick by Eleanor Lucer. And it's a, it was in my old papers. I was looking through old papers from when I was in school because my parents, for some reason, kept all of that stuff. And I saw this play, The Mixing Stick, and I don't actually remember it, but I, but I kind of was able to guess the plot because I've heard of other similar kind of folk tales or, or, or plays. And, I, and I, I kind of was able to sort of glean before even reading it what it was about. But when you read the, the content here, what it's about, it's, it's about a village that's going through a rough winter and uh, don't have a lot to eat. And they all have a little something here or there, but they, you know, Maybe one person has onions, one person has potatoes, whatever. And this uh, peddler comes into town, and he's like a secretly a magic guy, like a wizard or something. And he says, I have this magical mixing stick. And if everybody contributes something to the stew, this mixing stick will turn it into an amazing <clears throat> feast, the likes of which you have never seen. And so you know, everybody in town just contributes what they have. Some people have nothing but, like, say, a pinch of salt. Some people have, you know, uh, tomatoes, some people have onions, some people have potatoes, some people have some meat, and they mix it all together uh, into this big uh, stew, and it turns into this, it's this amazing feast. The, the lesson of the story is, if we all share what we have, if we all uh, share and share alike, so to speak, um, then, then there's enough for everybody to eat and everything's going to work out great and you're going to have this great stew. Instead of just having potatoes all winter, you'll have this, this wonderful stew with a variety of things in it. And, uh, you know, it's funny, but like as an adult and also as somebody who's kind of seen the last, how the last few years have gone in the world and everything, and also world history and things like that, it kind of reminds me of a certain uh, economic style. Uh -huh. It starts with a C. And then also uh, an O after that, not C A but C O, and uh, it's a, it's a it's a it's an economic system where everybody shares equally and every everything is equally distributed, and uh, it often doesn't go so well, and and it's it's funny because uh, these plays like this, like uh, the mixing stick that are given to to children in school, and are promoted, and then the you know you also saw these you know these kind of stories on PBS, the kid shows that PBS had, you know, another, uh, I think there was something similar to this in all dogs go to heaven. There was a scene where everybody's sharing the pizza. And even as a kid back then, when I saw that scene, I thought to myself, what if there, you know, what if there's like, uh, you know, 20 puppies and only eight pieces of pizza? Like what, what do you, <laughs> what are you left with then? You know, but, uh, so anyway, uh, I, I kind of like was really inspired by this and I thought to myself, what if I take this and try to turn it into a real world, simu like a simulation of what would really happen in the real world and being kind of the dick that I am, <laughs> I decided to go ahead and do the math and I call this doomed village. <laughs> and as you can see here, I, I created this artificial village uh, this imaginary village with all, I even came up with names for all the individual families. I wanted to treat them like real human yeah. beings, you know. And as you can see here, it shows how much uh, food each of these families have, like how much it's enough to feed. The richest uh, fam family in the village is the Joneses, because you got to keep up with the Joneses, you know. They have enough to feed four average-sized families. And then you have the Smiths with three the Daniels with two, the Thompsons with 1.5. Those those are kind of the richer families. And then you have the middle class with the Drakes, the Williams, the Clarks, the Hunters, and the Millers. And they have enough to feed anywhere from 1 to 0.5 average families. And then you have the poorer families like the Waynes, the Sacketts, the Fletchers, the Burnses, the Coburns, the Taylors, and the DeWitts. And as you can see, they, they don't even have, have enough to feed half of an average family, and a couple of them have basically nothing. Th those would be the ones that have nothing but, like, maybe spices, mm. like uh, salt or oregano or, you know, whatever. And I wanted to be fair when I made this, and I also wanted to make it close. I didn't want to, like, sh you know, blow this whole concept out of the water, like, oh, it would be just a disaster, be totally off. There's no way this could work, because yeah. I, I wanted to be realistic about it. 
And like seeing this small village, you add up all of those uh, those uh, figures for the meals, and it goes it comes to sixteen point five. And then you divide that by seventeen, which is the number of uh, families in the village, and you end up with point nine seven. Like if, if you divide all the food evenly, it's enough to each family gets point nine seven of what they need to uh, to survive. That's almost one. It's almost one, but it's not quite see, one. They, they just lose a little bit of weight, drink a little bit more water. No, no, no. See, the one I wanted that to be like, like bare that, minimum. Bare minimum, yeah, bare minimum. So somebody's gonna have to die, and the thing is, like this play, you know, it's I kind of call it a recipe for the for a Donner Party type situation, because that's kind of what it is. I mean, like back in in the olden days, and when people lived in small villages out in the wilderness, there were sometimes people who just didn't make it yeah. through a winter, and and like this this idea, this concept that that you have the you know. And, and of course, the the peddler is not really ma a magic guy. You're led to believe that he's a magic guy, but um, but he's not. He's just this guy with a. He's trying to teach the villagers a lesson about generosity, like say it's like, oh, the magic wasn't in, in the mixing stick. It was in your generosity. It was in your, you know. And look, I'm not saying that it's not important to share, because it is. And and back in in the days of these villages. People did share around, and, and they had to. That was how they kept social cohesion, and that's how they made sure they had enough people in the village to, to sustain the village, because sometimes bad luck would befall a certain family, and they would have to be helped out. But I'm just trying to show how it's not always the solution, and how it's not this magical uh, you know, thing that's you know sharing around, so to speak. Being communal, we might say, that well, it's the solution to everybody's problems. This reminds me of two things. Um, one would be kind of mutual aid and kind of community. So not really a Marxist thing, but kind of a go coming together and collaborative process on mutual beneficial kind of society that you could do something like that to try to help people and, and just kind of do something. Even if some people kind of starve to death, you can still take care of their children or still take care of some of the other people. Well, like, let's say the blacksmith's family is going through a rough time. You need the blacksmith because the blacksmith's the only one who can, like, make the horseshoes or whatever. Yeah. So you're going to have to help him out. But, um... So if they're an essential worker, they get saved if they're not. So what happens to the town drunk? He just kind of passes out and... Yeah, they find him in a snow drift in the early spring, you know, <laughs> clutching his bottle and, yeah. uh... Yeah. Um, At least the bottle kept him warm, you know. Yes. But uh, it also reminds me of, um, I don't know if you know who Tony Robbins is. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He, he's mostly, he's a, he's what they call a contrepreneur. He, he, he does, uh, he, he's like an, a motivational speaker who uh, has these programs that, are, that supposedly help you become successful. Even though he's never become, he's never been successful in business in anything other than motivational speaking. Yeah. But he did. He has also come out with some interesting stuff. And uh, years ago, he came out with a, a video, basically um, showing, like, if you incre if you increase taxes dramatically, like say, like a hundred percent, like you take everyone's, you take everyone's money, everything, like it's a hundred percent tax rate for everybody. You throw all of that into the government, it's still not going to balance the budget. Yeah. It's still not going to pay off the national debt. So the solution of just like tax people and, you know, tax ourselves out of debt or tax ourselves to prosperity, it, uh, it's not practical, you know. And that was a video that kind of, I think it came out like right around the 2012 election. And that was a video that kind of uh, it kind of sent me down a slightly different political path than I was in before, because it was it was incontrovertible. You, you watch that video and it's like, well, I, I guess that's true. I guess that I guess that we can't just tax everybody and expect all of our problems to be solved, you know. Yeah. But, um, so kind of similar to this story on a, on a much more modern and much larger scale. But this is mostly, I mean, this is mostly kind of, it's not a joke, it's not in jest, but it is kind of, kind of lighthearted. I mean, despite the grim subject matter, I didn't, I don't mean to like completely beat up on this play. I just thought it would be important to like, you know, cause like, let's face it, math class is just as important as English class. Yeah. So, 
that's basically what this is. But thanks for watching. Um, do you have anything to add, DB and Historian? Uh, there were a couple things I was thinking, but I think we covered a lot of them. There was something else I was going to say besides mutual aid stuff within the society. I'm just trying to think of what that was. But, um, yeah, I think that we've covered it good. Okay. Yeah, if you like these kind of, like, offbeat videos uh subscribe to my channel captain unusual we're closing in on a thousand subscribers right now which is an exciting time and hopefully i can get back to back to being monetized it's been a long three-year road to, yeah. to get to get up to the to the point that uh, where youtube thought it was necessary um and once i hit it uh, and, and get the watch time minutes and everything they'll probably raise it to ten thousand. but <laughs> Got to keep chasing that YouTube dragon. Yeah, so true. anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, uh, like and subscribe, uh, comment on, uh, you know, like what you, what you think of this play and the concepts that we're talking about and what you think about like, uh, you know, about kids being exposed to this kind of uh, thinking and, and the pros and cons of it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.